Lord, just lift your hands and worship. God, we give you the glory. song says any day now any day now the Lord is gonna do just what he said and I don't know how. all I know is any day now Lord is going to train them just what he said. So I'm watching, I'm waiting, and to some for I know he would do what he said he would do. Oh, I'm watching And I'm waiting Anticipating For I know he will do oh, What he said he would do So any day And I don't know, no, 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 all I know is any day now, how many of you know that the Lord will do the Lord, what God is going to do, just what he said. So I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Oh. I just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Amen. Put your hands together in this house. Amen. Also, put your hands together for Minister uh, Stokes over here. Mike, oh man, God has blessed us with some tools and some uh, some gifts to be able to go in solo. I was like, Mike, what you singing? He didn't want me to play, y'all. <laughs> Mike dissed me today. Lakita, he dissed me. I ain't mad though. Look at him saying he ain't mad at you. I talk to you when you get home. I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm not gonna say nothing. That boy too big to be talking to. Oh my God, I'm calling Silverback. <laughs> Rhino. <laughs> hey man, if you would, turn your book to the book of Psalms, chapter 27, and rest your finger at the 13th verse. Hey Amen. To our guests in the back, how are you doing on today? I believe the Lord has a word for you. What's your names? My name is Ross. Ross? Yes, Michelle. Michelle? This is Cruz. Cruz. Okay, Tom Cruz. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't missing impossible. Anyway, we thank y'all for coming on this morning. Amen. Amen. So 
<clears throat> Hold your word up high like we always do. And repeat after me. And I want y'all to say it with some passion and zeal. This is the word. Let it revelate. Let it open. The minds of those who read upon its patience. Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity once again to be before your people. God, you have already prepared the grounds. God, you have already let it be known that you are here and you are able to be reached. If any and every one of us need you, God, we can pull on you at this moment, at this time, and God, to receive what we need. God, the praise and worship. How you use Minister Joseph to open up the service. God, you have already shown me that you are in the house. And God, at this time, as we prepare to go into your inspired word, God, let this word impact us in a way that birth, life, understanding, and, 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 a, and a want to run. God, we just come here, God, to be fed. Not with physical food, but spiritual food. Because God, without you, we cannot stand, we cannot endure, we cannot overcome. So God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for just being here. Look at them and say, I'm thankful for, the, for being here. And we say that in your name and your son, Jesus, and the power of your Holy Spirit, all here say amen. Amen, amen, amen. And it reads... I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Amen. I'm going to read it one more time. I will remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Look at neighbor say, wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart. Trina, look at your neighbor and say, wait for the Lord. Amen, amen. Put your hands together in this house if you receive that. Amen. Before I give the title of my message, Michael, don't put it up just yet. I want to open it up, Mike. Um, back in the day, when I was cruise age, how old are you, cruise? Thir good, yeah, that's about right. About 12, 13 years old. Kalisha, my dad, uh, wake up on a Saturday morning and go to work, PNG, and, and, and Sparks, he'd leave us a little allowance for cleaning the house and washing dishes. Mike, you know, those things that we ain't gonna talk about it, Mike, okay. So, Mike said, don't come over this way with that. Cleaning our room and cleaning the restroom and cutting the grass and all that stuff. Mike, he'd leave us an allowance for our, our duties, our chores. It'd be about four or five bucks, Ted get about three dollars, it wasn't much. This was back in 1992, 93. And back then we had what we called the Nintendo. Some of y'all got the Switch. I don't know what you got now. Or the, the Xbox uh, Series X or S or the PlayStation 5. I got all that stuff. But back then it was called the, the NES, the Nintendo. And we had this store in town called Fun Flicks. Do y'all remember that? Over there where the old Snooks used to be. Fun Flicks. You would go there. Y'all don't remember Fun Flicks? Oh, my God. Anyway, they had a place called Fun Flicks. And uh, I would want to go and, and rent me. Y'all remember renting games? Mm -hmm. I want to go rent my, my video games. Deacon Sparks, don't laugh at me. I was a gamer and still am a gamer. So I get up and daddy be gone, so we got to deal with old Charlene. We got to deal with Shelly. Looking at him and say, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. So 
I get up early in the morning, Deacon Stokes, and I get my chores done. I do my bedroom, make my bed. Anthony, I brush my teeth, and I'm, I'm happy because it's Saturday. We're about to go to Fun Flicks, and we're about to rent these video games. I want to go get Double Dragon's Revenge, and I'm hoping nobody gets there before we get there. So I'm going into the bedroom. I'm knocking on the door. Mama, can we go to Fun Flicks? Mm. Woo! But I was on somebody else's time. Look at them and say, when you're on somebody else's time, it don't go like you want. So I knock on the door, Mama, uh, I got everything done. You told us last night you was going to take us to Fun Flicks. Well, she would say, well, go on and go uh, wait. I'm going to take y'all in a little bit. <laughs> Stokes, don't laugh at me. I'm going somewhere with this. Tell Stokes, tell Sparks, stop laughing at me. This is a kid. I'm 12. I'm cruise. I'm waiting to go somewhere. So she would tell us to go back downstairs, Mike, and, and wait. So we playing Mario and all the games we don't want to play, and I'm scared somebody's going to get the game I want to rent. So I go back upstairs and, hey, Mama, uh, uh, are we going to Fun Flicks? She'll look at me like, well, we're going to go. Just go back downstairs and wait. Mm. Woo! Another 45, 50 minutes passes. I was up at 6.37 in the morning. Now it's 8.30. I, I'm thinking about now mama is ready to go to Fun Flicks. I go back upstairs. And I'm excited. Boom, 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 boom. Mama, uh, she sleep like my wife be sleep. Mama, are we going to Fun Flicks? She said, if you come and knock on this door one more time, you won't have no money to go to Fun Flicks with. Go downstairs and look at your name and say, wait. Wait. That's right. Mm. So now I'm angry, Sparks and Stokes. I feel mistreated. I feel neglected. Bamboozled by my mother. Because she told me in the morning time we are going to Fun Flicks so I can rent and me and take a rent the games that we want to rent. But this bamboozlement has lasted too long. <laughs> Look at that and say it's going on too long. Woo! Didn't realize. The store probably didn't even open up at 10 o'clock. <laughs> didn't realize. <laughs> but in my mind, we're going to lose out because I have to what? Wait. Wait. Now you can put the title up, Micah. If I was to take a thought for this, mo this morning, it would be called In the Meantime. How many people know that statement? Mm -hmm. In the meantime. Amen. How you wait matters. Look at me and say, how you wait Say it with me. How you wait matters. Mm -hmm. Say it to the crew. How you wait matters. Look at them and say, in the meantime. Now, y'all know what that statement means, in the meantime, right? That is the time between now and what you're desiring to receive it. The time between Stokes right now and what you're hoping for coming to pass. The time between right now and what you need uh, coming into your possession in that meantime, looking at me say how you conduct yourself matters. Looking at me say in the meantime. Amen. So that's what we're going to kind of talk about this morning. Looking at me say you got to learn how to wait. Play on that how. You got to learn how to wait. So David said, uh, uh, 14, Micah, wait for the Lord. Be strong and courageous. Is that what it says? And then it says what? Wait for the Lord. Sparks, a lot of time, the weight is not the problem. Kalisha says, how are we waiting? Let me say that again. The weight is not the problem. Sister Veronica, the way you conduct yourself in the meantime 
is the problem. See, <laughs> un un unknown to my little, small, 13, 12-year-old mind, I thought now means now. But the person who controlled the matter and understood when we were going was not so, uh, Mike, consumed with our uh, with my distress to jump up because I'm distressed. I hope y'all listen to me this morning. The person that understands and got everything under control, has the keys to the car, put the gas in the car, has control of this moment, is not so preoccupied with my concern and my stress to jump up. Oh, you're concerned, you're bothered, you're worried. Let me jump up and go start the car so we can go to Fun Flicks and sit in the parking lot for a couple of more hours. Because it's not open. Look at neighbor and say, neighbor, God has it. Under control. So in the meantime, you got to learn the right way to wait. I, I, I just want to, Trina, I just feel like somebody has to get this. Look at them and say, you're waiting wrong. See, <laughs> I'm going to get back to the word. Anthony, we are waiting. We are conducting ourselves in the meantime wrong. Mm -hmm. Stokes, that in between space, we are handling it the wrong way. And some of us are, are prolonging. You are delaying. You are pushing off what you are hoping for. God has already predetermined when he going to move. You can't alter that. Uh, Khalees, you can't change that. And guess what? You can't even prevent it. Well, now I'm going to take that back. You can not prevent it. But you can't change when he going to move. So if he's already, Stokes, a, a designated time where he's going to answer, you have to have the confidence to endure till that time comes. Look at your neighbor and say, how are you conducting yourself? Say it. How are you conducting yourself in the meantime? Ooh, ooh this, this hitting home to me. Some of us just don't know how to wait. Michael, put up uh, uh, 27 and 1. So, this is something David said. My stronghold, okay, start at the. The Lord is my what? Light and what? Whom shall I what? The Lord is my what? Stronghold of my what? Of whom shall I what? Okay, so this is David. This is particularly a young David who, if you know the story, Samuel came to David because God has sent him to his father's whose house? Jesse's house? To anoint a new king for Israel. And he comes to Jesse's house seeking out his sons. Of course, Jesse has many sons, so they all come before Samuel. And of course, y'all know the story. Uh, all the sons come but David, and, and the oil would not flow because God had not chosen any of these sons. And he said to uh, Jesse, do you have another son? And he said, yes, I have the youngest. He's out tending to uh, my sheep. He said, call, fetch him to come in. And when David came in, they said he was small and ruddy. Uh, uh, but as he stood before uh, the Lord and the man of God, dusty from uh, tending to the uh, flock of God, it says as he began to pour the oil, the oil began to flow and, and Samuel anointed David the next king of Israel now the story goes on that uh, 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 it progresses to this situation uh, with Goliath this, this Philistine giant this warrior from the Philistines who was contending against sparks against uh, 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 the army of Israel and he's coming up because his father sent him uh, to see about his brothers. And he comes over the hill and he overhears uh, uh, this giant uh, uh, 
tormenting and, and teasing and, and what's the word, uh, provoking Israel to fight. And they all, uh, Sister Betty, is hiding out in the mountaintops. Even King Saul himself is hiding out because they are all scared of this giant. This, this one of these descendants of, of the uh, sons of Anak, this giant, this uh, Nephilim, this giant was in the land and he was fifa and faux farming and he was stumping and he was beating his chest and he was looking big like that son over there and nobody wanted to contend with him. Mike didn't even catch that. Nobody wanted to fight. They uh, uh, leave their hearts up to their toes. They didn't want to deal with this, with this rhino. <laughs> That's what I'm going to call him. So, David comes over the hill. Kalisha, he hears it. Y'all know the story. And he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that defies my uh, Lord and the, and the army of Israel? And, of course, he, said, he says, who's going to come out and fight me? And David said, I'll go out and fight. He has a conversation with King Saul, and Saul's tried to put his armor on him, and all these things said, you're too young to go out and contend. You're too young to do this. And he said, uh, you are but a youth. And David began to tell him how uh, when the lion came and how when the bear came, and they took one, uh, uh, came at my father's sheep, and he took one. I went out, and I slew the bear, and I slew the lion, and this giant shall be like one of them. And he said, I have proven none of this stuff. I'm going to go out with what God has already protected me with. So he went out with his tool, and he dealt with this Goliath, and he took down the Goliath, and he cut the Goliath's heads off, and, and, and then he became uh, uh, this uh, well-respected uh, person in the kingdom. Saul said, bring him to my house. He was renowned at this time. Bring him to the house. He would, he would live with me from this day forward. So David came into this prominence. He, he, he left for being forgotten by his father, Jesse, to being in the house of the king. Not realizing that he's about to go through a storm. Now, because of the women, look at the name and say the women. Look at the name and say the women. <laughs> Why y'all all not talking to me this morning? The women begin to sing, David's ten thousand, Saul's thousands. Ooh, this, 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 this pricked the heart of, of King Saul because they begin to praise David over him. And, and Saul is not stupid. Saul understood that this person probably is going to be who they want to be their king. And from that day forward, Saul began to conspire against David. He began to uh, uh, look for opportunities to undermine David, and he was really trying to take David out. One time, he, those spirits began to torment him, and he, was, he called David in to play his, uh, his instrument. And as he's playing the instrument, uh, uh, Saul took a javelin, a spear, and threw it at David's head, seeking to kill him. And David dodged it and ran out the room. David understood he was in between a rock and a hard place. Look at he said, the Lord is my light and what? My salvation. So now David is in this position where the person that he loves wants to kill him. Now he has to flee from his home. He has to flee from his kinsmen. He has to flee from his land. Now he's surrounded in a land of his enemies, their rivals. He's in the backyard of the Philistines. So David has no allies, not many allies around him, and he has all these enemies, all these people that would desire to take him out. He's surrounded by all this. Uh, 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 an enemy and a rival in the Philistines, a king that he loves that want to kill him, and the army is seeking him to kill him, and he has very few allies. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he's in a bad place. But I want y'all to notice something. How is David talking? Spark Stokes, how is he talking? The Lord is my light and my what? Salvation. Whom shall I fear? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you better guard how you talking in the meantime. 
Look at that and say, what are you saying? Why are you waiting on the blessing? Why are you waiting on the promise? Why are you waiting on the answer? How are you talking? I'll use old little Stafford. Y'all know him as Ralph. When mama didn't jump up, Kalisha, when I was ready to go to Fun Flicks, I went downstairs and I began to protest. I, I'm, I'm, I'm conspiring with my younger brother Tay. I got Tay up. Now he protesting. Stokes don't look down. Oh, yeah, I went down there, Stokes. Now, mama ain't right. Oh, boy. Mama's not right because she said she was going to take us to get these games. She said in the morning, it's the morning. We ready to go now. Tay up. Tay was fine. Now all of a sudden, yeah, Ralph, she ain't right. <laughs> now we both downstairs talking, upset and mad, Trina, because we got to wait. But David said, the Lord is my light. Do y'all understand what he mean when he says the light? Look at that. Say, do you understand what he means by that word light? Because it ain't a simple statement. Joseph, what he means is the Lord is my knowledge, my understanding, my enlightenment, that he has everything under control. He's enabling me, and I'm going to show y'all in a second, Kalisha. He's enabling me to see beyond my present circumstance. He's causing me to understand that, uh, Sparks, as long as I trust in him, I am good. No matter what I see, no matter what I'm experiencing, no matter what they're saying, I am good as long as I keep my hope, as long as I keep my confidence in he that sees beyond what I see and has everything in his hand. Look at your neighbor and say, he is my light. So even though I'm standing in a position that seems dark, Joseph, he is the light. At the end of the tunnel. I might not see anything but that light, Trina. So I'm just going to walk towards the light. He is my what? Salvation. He's going to deliver me. Look at that and say, you got to know how to talk to him in the meantime. You got to know how to talk to him. While you're waiting on what you are hoping for. You got to know how to talk to him while you are anticipating what is coming down the road. Look at your neighbor and say, how you conduct yourself while you wait is important. Amen. Some of us are losing it in the in-between place. Some of us are struggling because we got to wait. And I know it don't feel good waiting. <laughs> I don't care how old you are, waiting don't feel good, especially when you want something to happen and you want something now. Waiting for it, Trina, don't feel good. And don't let anybody lie to you. David wasn't feeling good. It wasn't that David felt good to be pursued by his his, the person he called his spiritual father. His king is pursuing to take his life. The person that uh, Lakita he respect and honored and reverence uh, is trying to kill him. And he loved Saul. He loved Saul. When he found out that Saul had got killed, he cried. When the young man came up to him and lied and told him he had killed Saul, he killed that boy for lying telling a falsehood about killing Saul. He said, how are you going to touch God's anointing? David said, I will not touch God's anointing, meaning I will not put my hand on King Saul. God chose him, so it's for God to deal with him. I'm not going to take him out so that I can step in. I'm going to wait. I love him. I respect him. And guess what? I respect God even more than him. But David, don't get it wrong. David loves Saul. That's like uh. Uh, Samuel loved Saul. That's why God said, why are you still crying and weeping over Saul, seeing that I have rejected him? People love Saul, but David is running from him, 
so much so that he has been pushed into the territory of his enemy. He's surrounded by enemies. Michael, go to verse 6 real quick. No, verse uh, 3. What did I give you? I'm not sure what I gave you. <clears throat> want to make sure I'm right with you. You got 6, then go to 6. That's it then. And I'm going to read this real quick with 3. It says, Though an army besieged me, my heart will not fear. I'm going to get to 6. Though war breaks out against me, even then, I will be confident. That's what he said in verse 6. Even though the Israel army, my, my friends, my kinsmen are raising against me, even though the Philistines that I have fought with, I have uh, conquered and beaten, they are looking to also take me out. I will remain, look at your neighbor and say, confident. Sir, I don't know what you're dealing with, but the Lord said, just remain confident. You didn't come here for no reason this morning. You need to be reminded of who you can turn to, who has your life in his hands, who is looking out for you, who knows your plan, and he already has to determine when and where things are going to happen. So all you and your wife and your family has to do is stand and remain confident while you wait on him to move. Look at that and say, remain confident. Why? Deacon Stokes, do we need to remain confident? Why, Joseph, do we need to remain confident? Because that's the only thing lead pulling us above where we currently are. And if you think I'm tripping, look at what he says in verse 6. Then my head will be high above my enemies around me. Kalisha. When you remain confident, even though you're still waiting on the blessing, still waiting on the answer, still waiting on God's provision, as you remain confident, uh, God pulls you above the situation. He might not pull you out of it. But treat it like you're in water. You was drowning under the water, but some kind of way you, you begin to, what they call that right there, shred water, you begin to float a little above the water. You, you're not out of it, you're still in it, but you can see. Look at them and say, I can see. <laughs> Stokes, I can see. I might still be in it. I still, I'm still getting the, the letters telling me, hey, you got this. and Hey, this is about to happen. Hey, they're about to foreclose. Hey, they're about to take your house. Hey, they're about to take your job. Hey, you might be getting all that, but uh, the Lord has lifted you above and is allowing you sparks to see. That's why Caleb said, we can take it because I have seen it. Right. I know we got to deal with some stuff, but I can see. see. Look at that and say, I can see. I can see. Then my head would be high above my enemies around me. That's the, that's the male that came in and told you uh, uh, that you don't have enough to pay your bill. And uh, on this day, uh, if you don't pay your electricity bill, uh, uh, your electricity hammer is going to cut it off. Y'all got them uh, final notices. Mm -hmm. How many people, how many people have experienced a, a final notice? Uh, I know how that feel. Uh, 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 well, uh, by this time, hey, we're, we're going in a different direction and your department is about to be uh, closed and uh, we're not going to be employing you no more. How many people have experienced uh, not knowing where they're going to be working? Look at them and say, he'll pull you above their words. He'll pull you above towards what you're hearing. Go to the doctor. The doctor say, hey, we found some, some strange things uh, going on in your body. We, we got to do some tests. It's looking like, but God in your confidence, Trina will pull you above. He ain't pull you out. Look, he, he, he didn't pull you out of it. He just pulled you above it. Look at that and say, sometimes God just want to build you, so he pulls you above the situation, not out of it. He said, I will offer, look at this, sacrifices in his tent with shouts of what? Ooh, somebody should leap up for joy on that one right there. He will give you joy unspeakable. 
That's why I'm thankful for Joseph getting up here and letting that joy go. Because some of y'all need to jump up for joy. I don't know who. The, there you go. That's what I'm, somebody needs to jump up for joy. In the midst of it, you need to elevate your praise. Kalisha, the Lord said, if you would just leap for it, it's there for you. It's not taking you out. It's just giving you the peace of mind to withstand and endure in the meantime. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Joseph, I'm going to sing. I'm going to make merry. I'm going to get happy. I'm going to let my spirit be elevated above my situation, above my storm, above the stormy cloud. I can see the sun. I can see the horizon. I can see that he is coming for me. Look to the hills for which what? Come and show help for my help comes from who? The Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time to elevate. No, you're not out of it. No, you're still facing it. No, they're still talking the same. But Sparks and Stokes, I can elevate through the spirit of confidence. Yes. I will remain confident in this. Somebody needs some confidence. Somebody needs some confidence. Do I need to say it one more time? Somebody needs some confidence. So in the meantime, look at that say in the meantime, you got to change the way that your mind endures. Michael, put this up. We, we about to wrap it up. Go back to verse 13. I am certain. Look at that and say, David is talking good. Kalisha, I am certain that I will see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Now, now, Sparks, Stokes, let's pause right here. So there are some promises that's going to come after this life. That reward, Kalisha, and Sister Betty is already sealed mm -hmm. but I, I, I want to say there are some things that's going to happen in this life now. and David said I want those things that's right. Samuel didn't come to my father's house and anoint me king so that I can be lost over here in the land of the Philistines and lose my life at the former king. So there are some promises that you have promised me in the land of the living that I am expecting you to bring to pass. So I am certain. Look at them say it's going to happen. Look at them say it's a guarantee. Ooh, there are some things that you cannot even alter. It got to happen. If you feel it, just jump up and say, it got to happen. It happen. Yay. Yes. He said, I am certain that I will see it. Tosha, I am certain that it's going to happen. I am certain that in the time of need, it's going to show up, it's going to manifest. So as I wait in the meantime, I am confident that it's going to happen. In what? The land of now. I'm not going to die and get up into heaven and did No, I'm going to enjoy it while I got blood pumping through my bones, through my flesh. Look at them and say, I got to remain confident. I don't know. I, I, I feel it all today, man. If you feel it, just give them a hand. Put your hands up. Just reach. If you feel it, I have to understand how. Look at them say, I got to wait. But I got to wait the right way. See, we don't want to be like the children of Israel who made a few days th journey 40 years. The ones, the original ones that was brought out of Egypt who, who was uh, carried out in, in a mighty way with gold all around their neck and they came out and, and as soon as they began to hit some turbulence, they began to be all little Ralph. 
Somebody bamboozled me. Somebody lied. Somebody is not looking out for me. But I got to be like David. I will magnify the Lord. I will remain confident. I will remain uplifted. I will see above my storm. Look at every sight. Remain confident. Go to verse 14. We're about to wrap this thing up. So he says, wait for the Lord. Look at them say, wait for him. I don't care how many emails come in that says it's not going to happen. I don't care how many times you don't get the news that you're looking for. The Lord says, wait for who? Wait on me. See, see if King Saul would have just waited. See, he got nervous too. Because he had to go to war. So he went and he did something he wasn't supposed to do because he didn't wait. When the uh, uh, man of God was supposed to come and do the sacrifice, Saul took it upon himself because he feared uh, uh, the war they was about to go into and he wanted the blessing. So he performed the sacrifices himself and he jumped ahead of God. And he forfeited his right to be king. Israel, because of their complaining, in the meantime, in the between time, forfeited the opportunity to go to the place that God had promised them. Some of y'all have to guard your mouth in this moment. Look at them and say, you got to talk right. I had to learn how to talk to my mama. I, uh, Stokes, I had to learn how to, how to mama. So when do you want to go, mama? I learned because I didn't want to lose my money. See, it wasn't just losing the opportunity to get the movie. Uh, Sparks, I'm losing money too. <laughs> I had to learn how to be patient. All right. I had to learn how to wait. And when she was ready to go, the gas and the car started up. Mm -hmm. See, it's, it's going to happen, Cruz. You just got to wait. I hear the Lord saying, it's going to happen. Look at this. It's going to happen. But you just got to wait for it. And it's a beauty in the wait. Because as you wait, Betty, it builds your uh, uh, endurance up. It, it strengthens you and it, and it prepares you for the next time where you're in the in-between place. And when you're in that in the meantime, you will learn how to even endure that. Look at them and say, remain confident. He said, wait for the Lord. Be strong in what? Why you need to be courageous? Because everything is coming at you. Everything is saying the opposite of what you're being strong for. And he didn't say it's going to, he said, and wait. You know what I mean? He, David understood, I'm still, I still got to wait. It's going to happen, but I just got to wait for it. Now, I want to say this to you guys. The Lord said, I know the plan. Plans to what? Prosper you and give you what? Huh? Your expected what? Stokes, he said, I already know what the end looks like. Cleese, I already know how the story concludes. Now, let me say it. Let me do it better. How this chapter concludes. Because we know the end of the story, but there's chapters in our life that, that God said, I already know how this, this, this storyline ends. Yeah, I heard that they said you won't have the job. I heard what they said, you won't have this and you won't have this. But I know how the story ends. And I hear the Lord saying, so as you wait for the details, as you wait for the conclusion as you wait for uh, the joy and the happiness of walking into what I've already determined you have to learn how to properly wait I learned how to learn I learned how to sit down I learned how yeah I did she taught me she taught me how to go and relax guess what the game I was so worried about leaving Fun Flicks was still there. And Deacon Stokes, I had the money that my daddy gave me to get it. Because I learned how to hush up 
and sit down and wait. God is not going to rush because you're crying. God is not going to rush because you're so overwhelmed. God already, see, she already knew. She already knew the store doesn't open to 10 o'clock. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. Them two hours for me felt like eons. But it was just a moment in time. Some of us feel like, I've been in this too long. It, it just you haven't, you haven't even experienced nothing. When I learned how to rest my mind, look at them and say, rest your mind. That's why he said, don't worry and be anxious. What does it mean? That means over, up, overloading your mind with worrying and, and speculating what if and what, how. And, and don't give all your mind to this stuff for your Lord already knows what you need. So I got to learn, like my mama taught me, God is also, he said, if your parents chastise you, he said, I'm your father in heaven. Sometimes I give you these trials to cause you to grow. Last night, we, last week we dealt with them trials, right? And the purpose for the trial. This week I'm letting you know, the Lord said, all you got to do is wait the right way. I'm going to ask you, don't even worry about that. I'm going to come through. Don't worry about that. Just learn how to wait on it. Amen. Amen. My God didn't give you this, but so don't worry about it. Romans says this, for we know that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and what? Are called according to what? His purpose. All things what? Work together for the what? The good, so that means the person sitting outside of time. Trina has, has determined that this little uh, 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 waiting period is for your good. Woo, that's why Christmas only comes once a year. Oh, yeah, you got to wait 12 months. Kendall already talking about her birthday. Her birthday was two months ago. She already trying to plan for next year. I told her, I said, Kendall, we, I picked her up. I said, Kendall, let's worry about January the 6th next year. Uh, it's, it's only March. Some of us are already. <laughs> don't worry about it right now. It's going to take care of itself. So stand up to your feet real quick. And I want to encourage you. I hear the Lord just saying, I got it. Nikita, I already got it worked out. I already know what I'm going to do. Sometimes with your son, you already know what you're about to do. They don't know. You know that you got it all worked out, all planned out. You, you know when we're going to go to the store. You know when we're going to get the tennis shoes. You know when we're going to go get the suit. You got, you got things you got to deal with. Uh, uh, to prepare for him getting the Jordans he won't not, but you know, but he gonna bug you. But do it make you move? Why? Why don't you move, Lakita? Cause you know, Friday, Friday we're gonna get the shoes. Not on Tuesday, not on Wednesday, not on. Th I don't care what the coach said. And the, uh, and the daddy, the coach. I don't care what they said. I have already predetermined that when I get my check on Friday, that's when you will get the shoes. Not before Friday, not Tuesday at 12 o'clock, not Thursday at 1130. It's going to be at Friday, and I choose the time on Friday. That's how God is. I already determined when I'm going to do it. I hear the Lord said, I've already determined when I'm going to do it. That's already worked out. Now, I need you to have confidence that I worked it out. So talk to me right. Don't forfeit. Don't make me push it off. You don't think God will push something off? 
You don't think God will delay it? He will. If it means teaching you or cause you to learn something, he'll push it off. That's why David said, I will remain confident in this. Y'all know y'all, who's that, William Murphy? I know he's going through right now. He need to listen to his own words. Anyway, we won't do that. I will remain confident in this. I will see what? The goodness of the Lord. I will what? Remain confident. The Lord says, speak to me and approach me right as you wait for what I've already put in place. Lord, we just thank you for this message on this morning. God, teach us how to endure, how to manage the in the meantime, in the between time, God. In that space between right now and the provision that we need, the answer that we're hoping for, the promise that we're expected to manifest. God, show us how to conduct ourselves. Show us how to manage ourselves in the waiting period. In that waiting room. That's what I should have called this, the waiting room. While we're in the waiting room, waiting for the results, waiting for the answer, that, that, that torment of mind that comes in, what if and what could be, God, show us how to remain confident. Those that are struggling, those that are right in this place, God, touch them where they are. God, give them that glimmer of hope like you gave David. Lift them above the clouds of their enemies, the voices and the noise of the army surrounding them, the enemy's voice around them. Let them cast down every imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought under the obedience of God. God, we need you. God, we need you. And it's time. We need you to help us to endure and overcome. And we ask this in the mighty name of your son, Jesus, and the power of your Holy Spirit. Everyone here say amen. Amen. And amen. Put your hands together and give God some praise in this house.